Hello guys, welcome to Study IQ. I'm Safir. In this session, we're going to talk about round table conferences. Very important topic from modern India. Okay, so we will be talking about the round table conferences. So basically, we have to discuss three round table conferences. And if you see, uh, they will ask you questions on 1935 Government of India Act. Okay. So in case if you are getting a question means about 1935 Government of India Act, you will have to discuss about this roundtable conferences and the outcome of those roundtable conferences is what actually lead to 1935 Government of India Act. So this is very important in that context. Anyway, other than that also, if you get a question on civil disobedience movement, still you will be talking about roundtable conference because the first roundtable conference, Congress was not participating in the second one. Congress was participating and Gandhi actually represented Congress. And then there are some Gandhi Irvin pact and everything during that time that you need to discuss. And then what happened, all those things, Pune pact, the communal award and all those things need to be discussed even when you discuss about civil disobedience movement because that movement got a post temporarily. And after the failure of that uh, second round table conference, it actually resumed, but then that vigor of the movement was actually lost. So civil disobedience movement, you have to talk about this. When you talk about Simon Commission, okay, so still you have to discuss about this because roundtable conference is basically related to the discussions on Simon Commission recommendation regarding the further devolution of power, the future devolution of power. So Simon Commission recommendation is there and we have already discussed about that when Simon Commission came. See, 1909, there was a reform, Minto Morley, right, Council Act. 1919, Montegu Chemsford. That is the Government of India Act 1919. Now, the next 10 years is over. The reform, the, the devolution of power has to be there. That means the time is due already. So Simon Commission have come. And the problem was you are going to discuss or you're going to make a plan for the, for the devolution of power, right? And in that, there was no con contribution of Indians. There was no Indian participation. So that actually annoyed the Congress. And then Congress rejected Simon Commission. And then there was protest and in that protest, Lala Lajpadrai got killed and all those things, you know, and Bhagat Singh tried to retaliate that. And those issues are different. Keep it aside. But then when Congress rejected Simon Commission, so what British did, British have told or asked the Congress to come up with a formula of a future devolution of power, which should be applicable to different sections, all the sections like Muslim League, Hindu Mahasabha, princely states, like everyone, right? And that outcome is what Nehru report. And we discussed about Nehru report. Along with that, we also talked about, you know, Muslim League demand, right? And Delhi proposals. And then we discussed about Hindu Mahasabha demands as well. So, and then we talk about uh, uh, Gandhi's demands, 11 demands, and then civil disobedience movement and everything. So all those things actually covered in this channel itself. So here, what I want to tell you is all these events are connected. So you get a question on Nehru report, you have to talk about this. You get a question on Simon Commission, you have to talk about this. You get a question on civil disobedience movement, you have to discuss about this. You're going to get a question on 1935 Government of India, still you need to talk about this. So guys, you take it in this way, be it any question, you will never face problem with the content because even if you know little bit about 1935 government of India, let's say you know only about diarchy, you talk about roundtable conference and then go to that and then you need to be in a position to manage it, right? So even civil disobedience movement, if you don't know much about that, you know something, come to this, talk about the second roundtable conference, talk about Gandhi Irvin Pact and all, and you can manage it. That is what I'm saying. So all these are chain of events and all are connected. So if you can you know, arrange it and if, if if then it is going to be a very good answer. Beautifully, you can manage it. So let's talk about three roundtable conferences, first, second, and third. Now, guys, what is important for prelims is who all are participated, when the Congress participated, when the Congress did not participate, why it did not participate, and all those things is what we need to know. And when Congress participated, what was that events which has happened during that time? Okay, so we'll discuss about that. So let's talk about the first round table. Now, what is round table conference? It is basically to discuss the Simon Commission recommendation regarding the future devolution of power. So Simon Commission have come, have made some certain recommendations regarding the further devolution of power. So the, now the thing is that the formula is already set. 
So you are only called to discuss upon the Simon Commission recommendation. You are not invited to give your suggestions or your points. So things are already settled on the basis of Simon Commission. And if you see 1935 Government of India Act is also going to be based on that majority. Okay, so that is the reason why if you see the first roundtable conference, Congress is not interested and Congress is not participating. Why? Because you don't have any room. You don't have any space there. You don't have any anything to uh, you know recommend or anything. You can come, you can discuss, and you can go. That's it. Whatever you're going to say, it will not be taken care. So already the basic framework is there. What is that? Simon Commission recommendation. This is basically to discuss upon that. Congress was not interested in this way back that time itself when Simon Commission came that time itself Congress have rejected it. So there is no point in discussing upon the same. So you think logically first roundtable conference if you see Congress did not participate. Why? Now there is no need to have any confusion right there. Don't need to mug it up like this. First Congress is not there. Second Congress was there. Third Congress was not there. Congress is not interested in roundtable conference because roundtable conference is to discuss upon the formula which is given by Simon Commission. It is basically to discuss upon the Simon Commission recommendation. When the Simon, forget about the recommendations now, when the Simon Commission have arrived, that time itself Congress have rejected it. So Congress is not interested in it. Why in second they have participated, there is a reason, we'll be talking about that. Okay, so Congress did not participate. So who else participated, you need to know. So Muslim League, yes, participated. And then Hindu Mahasabha, yes, participated. Princely states, yes, participated. And who else is that very important personality? Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. So Dr. Ambedkar. So they are actually participated in the first roundtable conference. So what is the roundtable conference is all about? To discuss upon the future or further devolution of power which is based on the Simon Commission recommendation or that formula or the framework which is already set. So since something is already set and you don't have anything more to recommend or discuss, that's the reason why Congress was not interested. And this, this formula was set by Simon Commission, which do not had, did not have any Indian participation. That's the reason why that time itself, it was rejected by Congress. All right, guys. So that is the first one. Okay. And the absence of Congress was not actually considered desirable because, uh, you know, what is the British claim? British always used to claim that they are trying to incorporate Indians also in their discussions and, uh, you know, for the devolution of power and everything. So if you are not bringing Congress into the table, majority of the section is actually represented by Congress and it is not democratic. So con the, the British is so desperate to bring the Congress into the table. So that is why Congress next time try their best to bring the Congress into the table for the negotiation. So you can just write one line if you want. The absence of Congress in the first roundtable conference dented the British claim that they are engaging Indians in the process of consultation of devolution of future devolution of power. Okay. So why Congress have boycotted? The structure is already given by Simon Commission. You can just come recommend you can give some suggestions it won't be taken anyway okay so that's the reason why congress boycotted and launched the civil disobedience movement so that's about the first round table conference nothing much to discuss now let's look into the second round table conference 1931 32 so the first was in 1930 okay so now the governor general, Lord Irwin, he is so very keen to bring the Congress into the table for negotiation or they want desperately Congress to be part of second round table conference. So, uh, you know, uh, because Congress is the biggest organization, Congress have maximum people participation and people support also. So when you're claiming that you're democratic, you're bringing, um, you know, you are listening to the voice of the people, then obviously you have to bring in Congress. So that is the reason why they have tried to talk to Congress and they have tried to bring in Congress in the second round table conference. So Gandhi, are in, Gandhi and Irwin began the talks and they have tried to convince Congress to participate in the second round table conference. And then the pact was signed, the most important one, Gandhi-Irwin pact. It is controversial also related to the death of Bhagat Singh anyway, but this question was asked in prelims 2020, Gandhi-Irwin pact directly. Okay, so let's talk about 
Gandhi, Irwin, Pact. So Irwin, I've actually given certain offers also to Gandhi and Congress. In fact, uh, Gandhi as actually Mahatma Gandhi is representing Congress, right? So let's talk about Gandhi, Irwin Pact. And temporarily, the civil disobedience movement actually got suspended during this time. So Gandhi and Congress made series of demands to the British. Now let's look into this. The first one, all political prisoners imprisoned during the civil disobedience movement must be released. So all political prisoners, I'll just write only this, all political prisoners who are imprisoned during civil disobedience movement must be released. So you can just write it there. All political prisoners imprisoned during civil disobedience movement must be released. Is this accepted or not? Yes, it is accepted. So we will see which one is accept, which of these demands. I've told you they have made series of demands and we need to see which one is accepted, which one is not accepted. Okay, so this is actually accepted by the government. Now the second demand was all lands confiscated, lands which are confiscated and yet not to not sold to the third party. So lands confiscated upon non-payment of taxes and all and not sold to the third party must be given back. Okay, must be returned back to the original owners. So I hope you understood this. Why your uh, land is confiscated? Because uh, you might not have paid tax. In fact, why this movement is called civil disobedience movement? Civil disobedience, because you are violating some law. And in most of the cases, it is about non-payment of taxes. Most of the cases, the civil disobedience movement will be non-payment of taxes. So when you're not paying tax, well, obviously when it comes to civil disobedience movement, it was mainly related to the salt tax that was actually taken up as a main issue but other taxes are also not paid in different other regions. So this is one of the demand by the Congress that the lands which are confiscated by the state, but not sold to third party due to you know, non-payment of taxes and all should be returned to their owners. Is it accepted? Yes, it is also accepted. It is returned to the owners. And the third one, Mahatma Gandhi and Congress forced the British to remove salt tax on salt manufactured for self-consumption. So if you remember when I talked about civil disobedience movement in the beginning, that salt was taken up as a major issue because this is something which is going to affect all. If you have taken land revenue as the issue, then Zamindar will turn against you. Pesan may support you. Similarly, if you take something else, then related to capitalist, you can see, take then see anything else if you take, you may have to uh, face some resistance from some section. But salt is something which is a basic commodity which is going to affect all. And the problem here is salt is taxed not only for uh, manufacturing, for you know, uh, selling, it is also taxed when you're manufacturing for self-consumption. It is like taxing the poorest of the poor. right? So this is even considered as evil tax by Mahatma Gandhi. So the demand is if it is manufactured for self-consumption, don't tax it. But if it is manufactured for commercial purpose, okay, obviously when you are manufacturing something for commercial taxes, it should be, it is a right to the state to tax it. But for self-consumption, it should not be taxed. And that is also accepted. So you can just take it down. Salt or Mahatma Gandhi and Congress forced the British to remove salt tax on salt manufactured for self-consumption. That means any individual who's making salt for Personal consumption should not be taxed. Is it accepted? Yes, it is accepted. Now, next one. What is the next one? Fourth one. Congress demanded for commutation of death sentence of Bhagat Singh to life imprisonment. So death sentence, change it to life imprisonment. So I'll just write Bhagat Singh here. It is not actually accepted. Nor Mahat the criticism is Mahatma Gandhi did not pressurize much because Gandhi is a firm believer of non-violence and this was related to violence. So he was not interested in all those, but obviously to what extent you can convince the British. And British also, if you see, if you are doing something like that, what they have done is they have thrown bomb in the legislative assembly and how can you tolerate it? If you tolerate it, that is like a, you know, a, that is a, that, that mighty empire. It is a shock. It is a challenge to the mighty M British empire. So they don't want such kind of instances to be promoted. Okay, it may get repeated again and again. So they are not willing to do that. So Mahatma Gandhi and Congress also very clear. They tried their best. They clearly know that this is not going to be possible at any cost. 
but they have made the recommendation. So the demand, okay, but it was not actually accepted. Then what the next one? Demand for inquiry into police excesses against civil disobedience movement. So during civil disobedience movement, there were some police excess, okay, police atrocities and all, even during Jalian Vallabhag also. But that time there was a commission, commission which was appointed to inquire into police excess, which was that commission, Hundar Commission. There was another Hundar Commission that is related to education in 1882. So police excess in Jalian Vallabhag time, Hundar Commission was there. But here also they have demanded a you know, inquiry into the police excess during civil disobedience time. Will that be accepted? No. Police excesses. I'll just write police excesses. You can write whatever you understood. So a demand for inquiry into police excesses against civil disobedience movement, not accepted. So the commutation of death sentence to life imprisonment of Bhagat Singh and others, not accepted. Police excess, inquiry upon police excess during civil disobedience movement, actually not accepted okay and then there are some other recommendations like there should be some lenient treatment to government servants who have resigned okay withdrawal of emergency emergence uh, you know emergency ordinance these recommendations was these demands was also there those are simple and those were actually accepted so guys i hope this demands are very clear so this is what gandhi Irwin Pact. And this was actually asked as a question. And I think this was the main point which they have tried to trap you, confuse you. Police excess related something. I don't remember exact question now, but you can look into that 2020 paper. You will see that particular question. What is the criticism? The criticism is related to Bhagat Singh. As I've told you, uh, Mahatma Gandhi's ideology is non-violence and Satyagraha and all. But Bhagat Singh, that was an act of violence. So he was not interested in you know, saving Bhagat Singh. So that is actually the criticism. If he could have pressurized more, he could have saved Bhagat Singh. That's what people think. But Mahatma Gandhi and Congress very well know about the mindset of the state. That is not going to be possible. Okay, because it is a challenge to that mighty British empire. You are going into the legislative assembly, you're throwing the bomb into that. Imagine you're throwing bomb to the parliament. Even now, will we tolerate? Parliament attack, will we tolerate? No, right? Even now, the, this kind of says, uh, time, this time, right? No, right? Afsal Guru, and we know this, it, uh, we know what has happened and all those things. So we are not going to do that. It is not possible. We, in no state will do that. It is not possible. It is, it is you know, challenging the, that empire itself. Okay? So, and there were some other criticisms, like if you remember 1929, Purna Swaraj resolution was passed. So we are now not looking for Swaraj or anything. We are looking for Purna Swaraj and independent. Then what is the need for this discussion at this point of time? We should continue with civil disobedience movement. And this is the right time to continue. So this is also one of the criticism. Anyway, Mahatma Gandhi and Irwin signed this and Congress agreed to participate in the second roundtable conference. So Congress is now all set to participate in the second roundtable conference after the Gandhi Irwin talk. And what is the significance of Gandhi Irwin practice? This is for the first time that a viceroy signing such a kind of pact with an Indian. And in that way, Congress got a very good mileage. Mahatma Gandhi obviously have got a very good mileage, right? Because the first time a viceroy is signing a treaty with the Indian, okay? Or, or Congress, basically. So in Karachi session, this session is very important, 1931, Karachi session, the Gandhi Irwin pact got endorsed and, uh, you know, the goal of Purna Swaraj actually reiterated, that is there, that is from 1929. And resolution on fundamental right and national economic program also was there in 1931. And then land revenue demand must be decreased. That is one resolution which was passed. Wages of workers in industries must be increased. Okay, so as I've told you, national economic program, resolution on national economic program was passed in 1931. And out of this, one related to agriculture and one related to industry worker, or basically one related to the tenants or the peasants and the other related to the industrial workers. Okay, so guys, related to the agriculture, what is that? Land revenue demand must be decreased. Related to industry, the wages of workers must be increased. And resolution on fundamental right also passed. So if you remember Nehru report, I've talked about the fundamental right related thing, right? So here the resolution on fundamental right passed. And this session gave the official go ahead for Congress to participate in the 
second round table conference and karachi session is also important because in this session the congress have actually praised the bravery of bhagat singh and others okay so uh, they adopted the congress have actually adopted a resolution praising the bravery and self sacrifices of indian militant nationalists like bhagat singh even though congress did not succumb to subscribe to their political ideology that violence okay that's about uh, you know these background things and what has happened in the second round table conference so mahatma gandhi as a representative of congress went there obviously who others are participated muslim league was there hindu mahasabha was there princely state was there and obviously dr b r ambedkar was there now the demand for ambedkar during this time was to give separate electorate to the dalits the backward caste guys within hindus you see there are divisions right brahmans kshatriya vaishya shudra there is a hierarchy this is varnas and then avarna dalits they are out of this and they are considered the worst and they will do this manual menial jobs and they are exploited like anything so dr b r ambedkar is actually asking for separate electorate for the dalits so it has been already given for muslims and anglo indians and christians and sikhs and all those things we have discussed in the 1909 onwards 1909 first to the muslims and then to others also now it has to be extended to the dalits as the demand of dr ambedkar and communal award what is communal award giving separate electorate to the hindus not hindus backward backward caste okay so guys in fact when i talk about backward caste these two are actually backward caste these three are the forward caste but this is dalit here we are mainly talking about dalit so i i want to be specifically mention about dalits actually so communal award is to give a separate electorate to the dalits okay that means you will be contesting from that group only and the electors the voters will be from that group only that is what you mean by separate electorate so what is the demand of congress congress is not happy with this congress never want this congress want okay we will give reservation in a joint electorate so mahatma gandhi is of the opinion that it will further divide hindus it should not be allowed rather we give reservation to dalits in a joint electorate like what is what we are doing in the panchayat raj institutions right women reservation was there 30 30% there is a joint electorate reservation for women separate electorate means the candidate will be from that community the electors also will be only from that community okay so what mahatma gandhi said is it will create further divide within hindus so it should not be allowed so communal award in 1932 uh then what has happened so they have realized that it's a deliberate attempt to divide the hindus and what mahatma gandhi did mahatma gandhi withdrew from second round table conference and because of this he sat on a hunger strike where in which uh, jail in yerevada jail okay in pune and uh, then under pressure ambedkar have come and uh, came and met uh, mahatma gandhi and after the series of discussion finally he have agreed for reservation for backward caste within joint electorate this is what pune pact between ambedkar and mahatma gandhi and the communal award was actually called off so i hope these things are very clear communal award 1932 giving separate electorate to dalits and then mahatma gandhi went for hunger strike and then um, under pune pact which is between uh, ambedkar and uh, gandhi mahatma gandhi and dr b r ambedkar always write like that only mahatma gandhi never write gandhi never write ambedkar dr ambedkar okay so communal award was actually called off and congress decided to resume civil disobedience we have told you temporarily they got stopped it but see when you are resuming now what is the point that vigor of the movement is lost so there is no point in now starting so there is nothing significant is going to come due to that movement now the third round table con conference so here congress is not participating so when congress participated only in the second round table conference due to the effort of irwin and after the gandhi irwin pact first congress is not participating third congress is not participating others you know muslim league hindu mahasabha uh, princely states dr b r ambedkar in all so now the confusion and everything is over right and on the basis of all these three round table conferences we have seen that 1935 government of india act 
Now guys, Government of India Act 1935, I've discussed in a separate video, what you can do is you can watch that and I've compared it with 1919 and also 1909. It is very easy to understand. Please do watch that so that you will get the continuation of this also. Now, what is the significance of roundtable conference? Guys, any question you get on Simon Commission, talk about this. You get on Nehru report, talk about this. You get on civil disobedience movement, you have to talk about this. You get it on 1935 Government of India Act, you will still have to talk about this roundtable conference. Pune Pact, you have to talk about this, okay? Communal award, you will have to discuss about this. Gandhi Irwin Pact, you will have to discuss about this. So, so much of things are connected in a, you know, intricate, but some meaningful way. All right, so let's stop here. I hope you enjoyed the session. And uh, if you like the video, don't forget to give me thumbs up. And if you have any questions, you can comment below. Thank you guys, see you in the next session.